Hello, hello everyone. My name is Dr. Garrett Smith, also known as the Nutrition Detective. And today we are going to go over vitamin A supplements, that they don't fix vitamin A deficiency actually, and that they also cause toxicity at the same time. We just uh, had a great new study came out and I wanted to go over it with you guys. So the goals of this presentation, what are we gonna go over? We're gonna go over that all forms of vitamin A, natural or synthetic, are exactly the same. And if anyone can find research showing that they're different, I'd love to see it because the research all says they're the same and that all of them cause toxicity at much lower doses than you were told. Uh, we're gonna go over how vitamin A supplementation in these supposed vitamin A deficient populations does not reduce mortality, the risk of death, or even bring up their serum vitamin A levels, the whole point of them giving it to them, right? The vitamin A deficiency is not from a lack of vitamin A. Those of you who have followed me know that I don't believe vitamin A is a vitamin at all. It is a plant toxin in the form of carotenoids, and then we turn it into retinoids as we decide to get rid of it. But actually, vitamin A deficiency is always caused by some other form of malnutrition. Calorie deficiency, protein deficiency, zinc deficiency, B vitamin deficiencies, it's always some other form of malnutrition. It is. This is even in the animal research. Next, the pharmaceutical companies that make all the types of vitamin A supplements in the world, they have vested interests in continuing people on vitamin A supplementation, even when the research is showing that it's not good for them that they're getting too much. Now, one of my favorite things we'll go over is how a well-nourished person, multiple studies showing well-nourished people, probably like the people who are watching this video, plus vitamin A of any amount equals a lower quality of life and an earlier death. And now we're gonna, we're gonna be talking about South Africa in this, in this presentation. We're gonna go over how they, they now have, after their vitamin A supplementation adventures, they now have a well-known vitamin A toxicity problem after these programs have been done for the last, I think it's 20 years. So first, I wanna cover how food and supplement vitamin A in the research has been shown to be exactly the same. We're gonna talk a little bit for a second about the appeal to nature fallacy that people like to talk about with vitamin A. They'll say, oh, but that wasn't natural vitamin A. Natural vitamin A is so different from supplement vitamin A, they can't even be compared. They absolutely can be compared. The appeal to nature fallacy is a fallacy of, a fallacy being faulty reasoning, is that something is good simply because it's natural or bad because it's unnatural. This is simply not true, never has been. What I wanted to go over first is from a study that showed that total vitamin A intakes barely above the RDA. But by the way, did you know that they recently lowered the RDA from 4,000 IU a day and 5, 000, for women and 5,000 IU a day for men down to 3,000 IU? Why, when have you ever heard them lowering the RDA on a vitamin? Maybe it's because they're finding out that we don't need so much and more makes you toxic. But anyway, 4,000 units a day for uh, adult women decreased bone mineral density, which also means it increased bone loss. It's also called osteopenia and osteoporosis. Barely above 4,000 units a day. Many people get this in their breakfast, and most people have this much by lunch, especially if they're trying to eat healthy, supposedly healthy. From the study, retinol intake and bone mineral density in the elderly, the Rancho Bernardo study. Quote, however, among supplement users, retinol from dietary and supplement sources had similar associations with BMD, suggesting total intake is more important than source. Hope you caught that. There was no significant difference in effect between the food and supplement vitamin A source. And we'll get into more on that later when we talk about vitamin A and uh, quality of life and early death. But the main reason for me doing this presentation today was I wanted to go over this new paper by C.S. Ben. I, her first name is Christine. Um, she's starting to figure it out. 
The title of the paper is called, Is it Time for South Africa to End the Routine High-Dose Vitamin A Supplementation Program? With a question mark. Another paper from her was titled, Combining Vitamin A and Vaccines, Convenience or Conflict? Wait, there's a conflict between vaccines and vitamin A? Huh. Very interesting. I'm not going to go into that paper. I'm going to save that paper for another presentation some other day. But she's one of the only few researchers. I think I have a list of a, a short list of about three different researchers who are actually actively questioning vitamin A. And she is particularly noting that when vitamin A is given with certain vaccines, it seems to cause increased mortality, aka early death. Really interesting, right? So first, I'm going to go into the, some of the quotes from the paper. Now, every vitamin A paper, any of you who are into vitamin A toxicity and researching about it, you'll find a paper where they found bad results from taking vitamin A, and yet the beginning of the paper is always this glowing review of how vitamin A is necessary and good for you. They always do this. It's like they have to do it. Well, back in the past, it proved helpful, and we all know that we need it. It's, it's, it's in that vein, okay? So we always, she starts with this. Quote, in accordance with World Health Organization guidelines, South Africa, abbreviated SA, introduced routine periodic high-dose vitamin A supplementation, abbreviated VAS, in 2002. These guidelines were developed after research in the 1980s and 1990s showed the efficacy of vitamin A supplementation in reducing childhood mortality, end quote. Research in the 80s and 90s, supposedly showing the efficacy of this. Hmm, have we had problems with corrupt studies in recent decades? Maybe, probably, definitely. So they introduced it in 2002. Routine, that means everybody, you know, it's normal. Routine means normal, standard. High dose vitamin A supplementation. Periodic means I believe they were giving it twice a year, once every six months. High dose. Okay, so now we get into the big, the big part of the paper where they, they have the glowing intro and then they have the, but we found something that doesn't seem to make sense. This is confusing. So let's go into that. Quote, however, two recent studies in low to middle income countries, 2013 and 2014, have shown no effect of high dose vitamin A supplementation on mortality. Additionally, there is no clear research evidence that six monthly doses of vitamin A result in a sustained shift in serum retinol levels or reduce subclinical vitamin A deficiency. These two points should encourage South Africa to re-examine the validity of these guidelines. A long-term view of what is in the best interests of the majority of the people is needed." End quote. So they have supposedly vitamin A deficient, a population that has a high amount of vitamin A, vitamin A deficiency in it. And they are giving them high dose vitamin A supplementation. And they're finding it's not helping with the mortality they were hoping it would help with, which they supposedly the 80s and 90s studies showed, but now it's not working. And it doesn't change blood vitamin A levels at all. Wow. I mean, why would you take, would, if the blood tests are legit, right, wouldn't taking some raise it? Shouldn't it? Okay, next part. Now we're going into, this is still from the same paper. Now we're going into how vitamin A deficiency, like I said earlier, and this has been shown in animal studies as well. Whenever they talk about vitamin A deficiency in animals, if you're reading a good paper, they'll say, well, there's usually a bunch of other nutrient deficiencies that go along with this. And I have veterinary papers on cattle that talk about this. There's always something else. It's never this one thing. And studies have shown that when they try to do high dose vitamin A for certain eye problems, they get no effect. 
So don't, don't think this is something new. But vitamin A deficiency is always some form of malnutrition. And you're going to hear that right here from this same paper. Quote, the short-term intervention of administering vitamin A capsules not only fails to improve serum retinol levels, but may create dependence on a technical fix to address the fundamental problem of poor nutrition, which is ultimately underpinned by poverty. It may also cause harm. Although there are those, some with vested interests, who will argue for continuation of the routine high dose vitamin A supplementation programs, South African policymakers and scientists need to evaluate the facts and be wait, evaluate the facts and be prepared to rethink this policy. End quote. Doesn't reduce mortality. Doesn't improve the blood vitamin A levels. They're, and even though they're trying, the technical fix they're talking about is fixing the blood levels. That's the technical fix, right? They think that if they shove the blood levels up, that they're going to have these magical effects. Well, for the, the supplements aren't raising the blood levels. It's not reducing mortality. It's not fixing any of the problems because it's not a real deficiency. It's always some form of malnutrition. Okay. Once you know that, then you understand. This is part of the development I've had in figuring out vitamin A detox and other things is what is nutrient deficiencies and what is toxicity? Vitamin A deficiency doesn't mean vitamin A is deficient. It means other things are deficient. So this is the best part. The bombshell final sentence. Quote, while the cleanest choice would be national discontinuation of the routine vitamin A supplementation program, there may be other possibilities, such as first stopping the program in Northern Cape province, where there is clear evidence of hypervitaminosis A, followed by other provinces in time, end quote. 2002, right? It's 2019 ending. We're, at, we're almost done with 2019. You may be seeing this in 2020. Clear evidence of hypervitaminosis A in Northern Cape province of South Africa. But this is a routine program, which means that it's standard. You're going to give these kids vitamin A whether they need it or not. I have the paper, this South African paper. Seven out of 10 children who ate liver on a regular basis in South Africa had diagnosable vitamin A toxicity, hypervitaminosis A. Seven out of 10 children. They are poisoning these children. And they're not stopping the routine program. So let's be clear here. Not a single problem has been solved by doing this and new disease was created. Good job, WHO and vitamin angels and all you guys helping. You know that one of the, uh, I have the paper on this, one of the um, known side effects of excess vitamin A is infertility. Some of you might know where I'm going with that. High dose vitamin A supplementation, not helping with reducing mortality, but hypervitaminosis, vitamin A toxicity is associated with causing infertility. Hmm. I'm going to leave that to you to put together the dots. So since you're probably in a, you know, fairly good position, if you're watching this video, if you consider yourself a well-nourished person, not a malnourished person, not in poverty and not, you know, scrounging for food, where if you, if you consider yourself a well-nourished person, you're going to want to listen to this part. From the paper, The Neurotoxic Effects of Vitamin A and Retinoids from 2015. Let me read that title again. The Neurotoxic Effects, Neuro, Brain, Toxic, Toxic, Effects of Vitamin A and Retinoids. Good title. It's great paper. Huge paper. Why is it huge? because vitamin A has been shown to be neurotoxic in so many ways. Quote, 
Nonetheless, it has been demonstrated that vitamin A intake among well-nourished subjects may lead to decreased life quality and increased mortality rates. And there's four papers referenced for that statement. I forgot the end quote. There it is. Let me read that one again. Nonetheless, it has been demonstrated that vitamin A intake among well-nourished subjects may lead to decreased life quality and increased mortality rates, end quote. Note that they didn't say excess vitamin A intake. They left that out. They just said vitamin A intake. So that means any vitamin A intake among well-nourished subjects may lead to decreased life quality and increased mortality rates. So what does that translate into? In well-fed people, vitamin A intake equals a lower quality of life and an earlier death. Did you know that the US government just started not requiring on the nutrition fact labels to put vitamin A on there because they said in, the, in America, there's no problem with vitamin A deficiency. We are one of the most well-nourished countries on the planet. Remember how I said malnutrition is what causes the vitamin A deficiency? If we don't have a country that's malnourished overall, you're not gonna see vitamin A deficiency. But that's because it's not over, you know, outright malnutrition. So anyway, now that we went over that paper, that's, that's, a, that's a countrywide demonstration of how vitamin A is poison and it doesn't, fix anything, doesn't fix what they say it's going to fix, and it's causing problems. And I went over showing you how natural and supplement stuff is all the same. Don't think there's anything different unless you can find research that shows that they're different because they will all show up the same on chemical analyses. It will all show up the same in the urine tests. It will all show up the same in the blood tests. There is no difference in natural versus supplement vitamin A. And, um, we also went over how well-nourished people will get health problems from vitamin A toxicity. And then even in South Africa, they're poisoning seven out of 10 children there in the Northern Cape region with vitamin A. And remember that vitamin A toxicity, one of the known side effects of it is infertility. Maybe that's why the Bill Gates Foundation pushes uh, high carotenoid foods, bringing those, they're now making what they call biofortified, which is really just a fancy name for GMO, biofortified carotenoid foods for poor, impoverished, malnourished countries. He also likes to push vaccines and he also likes to push birth control and Planned Parenthood. You know what they do. So, do all those line up in terms of affecting the population? I'd, I'd say they do. So anyway, again, my name is Dr. Garrett Smith, also known as the Nutrition Detective. If you'd like to get more information from me, my website is nutritionrestored.com. Uh, my network, which is the home of my vitamin A, aldehydes, and glyphosate detox program is nutrition-restored.mn. Dot co. This is like a little mini social network for people who are interested in, in my work and learning more about vitamin A toxicity. My videos can be found on youtube.com slash nutrition restored or also on uh, BitChute at bitshoot.com slash channel slash QNGKHN3CW83E slash. <laughs> Not a fancy name for the BitChute channel, but anyway, we just started that. We'll see if we can't get a better, a better domain on that one. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the presentation day. I have tons more research at my forum at nutritionrestored.com. And I have how to fix this problem at nutrition-restored.mn.co. Y'all have a great day. Hope you learned something. Bye now.